Our scripture for today is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14 and 16 from the New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Here ends the reading. Well, it's good to be back, and maybe you won't see me for a long time now. But it's good to be with you once more as you start out on this new journey together. So I want to talk to you today about relationships, about, you know, it'll be some about marriage and some about the relationships we have as we share in being the church together. You know, there was a young man who was deeply in love with a young woman, and when her birthday arrived the night before, he told her he loved her so much that he was going to send her a bouquet of roses, one for each year of her life. So he called the florist and he ordered 24 roses, one for each year of her life. Well, the owner of the shop heard the conversation and watched the clerk preparing the order to be delivered. And he hadn't heard the conversation where the man uh, told the person that he had declared his love the night before. So he said to the one preparing the order, you know, Jeff's a really good customer. Let's give him a bonus this time. Let's go ahead and put an extra dozen roses in the arrangement. Needless to say, the young woman was not pleased by this gift. And it took Jeff the longest time to figure out why she was angry. Sometimes you offer roses and you get thorns. Being a church is a lot like that story. Here we are, partners drawn together because we have been loved by God and by each other. And we try our best to express how much this love means to us, but sometimes, alas, the more we try, the more things slip through our fingers, and what we intend is not what is, gets delivered. So instead of love returned, it can feel sometimes in the church like thorny scratches and cuts that leave us injured and bleeding, angry and confused. But we know that in any mature relationship, we find ourselves having to adjust to some realities of what it really means to love each other. And one of the hardest things to come to terms with in in any deep relationship is that even when we try to do everything right, things don't always come up roses. You, Hazelwood Christian Church, are embarking on a new relationship with a new pastor, and those beginning times of learning to love each other are so significant. Honeymoons are important for marriages, 
and for congregations and pastors. These will be good times, but there will come times in any tried and true, well-aged and successful relationship when we come to realize that things aren't exactly what we hope for, and often we find ourselves not sure what to do about it. You know that old saying that hope lives eternal in the human breast. Well, sometimes we go more by the not-so-well-known adage, hope limps eternal in the human breast at times. But in a very real way, when those times come, that is a most excellent place in which to find ourselves because it means we can quit trying to make things happen and allow God to show us what is already happening among us. When we find our hope limps eternal in the human breast, we can trust that hope springs eternal in the heart of God. And that is exactly what I believe God wants us, God's beloved, to receive today and as the years unfold. For this truly is the hope we need. The hope we need to live meaningfully, to live abundantly, to live fully, is already among us. The light has come, John says. Isaiah says, arise, shine, your light has come. John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So as you go forward into a new and exciting future, let yourselves be embraced by that eternal hope that is in the heart of God, when God offered God's Son in the flesh to live among us so that we might know that hope that lights our way. For if we do believe that Jesus is the light of the world and in him was the life that God wants for us to know what it means when the gospel says, as John says, to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives power, and we receive from him grace upon grace. You know, if we all were honest about it, it can be easy to fall into that other part of the scripture that is mentioned when John says he was in the world, in his world, but his world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. Sometimes even when we know somewhere that he is among us, we don't live in that hope. We're like the woman who went to see the doctor to get help for stress and strains that she was experiencing in her life. And so the doctor prescribed rest and exercise and gave her a mild antidepressant and asked her to come back in a month. And so she came back and the doctor asked if she felt any difference. And she replied, well, I don't feel much different, but I notice that other people around me seem a lot more relaxed. <laughs> if we want to live in the light of Christ, we have to recognize our own thorny places that need to be healed. And the wonderful good news is that that healing is possible. When we're healed, it can allow others around us to relax. Jesus told us, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. So enjoy this honeymoon time when it's easy to know that Christ's spirit moves among us and we feel that joy of expectation. But when the honeymoon seems over and the light of, know that the light of Christ is still there, making a way to live fully and meaningfully, and that we can still hold on to the dream, the dream that we have, the dream that God has for us. We can still find a long and satisfying relationship. You may know he talks too much, or she doesn't say what you mean to her, and she may always be late, and he may be impatient, but in one of those long term fulfilling marriages, those don't seem to be the main things on the agenda. 
What is the main thing is that there is a trust between people who care for one another, a trust that both or all of us, in the case of being a congregation, have the assurance that whatever the circumstances around us are, we're in it together. We want the best for each other, and we're willing to do what needs to be done to make it work. So Hazelwood Christian Church, here's what I think God wants you to hear this morning as your new future awaits. The hope you need that we all need is in the light and love of Jesus Christ, who's already among us and showing us the way that makes life and living abundant and full. And you are here because at some very deep level, you know you have been loved by God and by each other. At your best, you have been and continue to be a brilliant reflection of the light of that love. You have thrived, and when needed, you have survived many difficult times. Your care for one another has deepened over time. You can laugh together, and you have cried together. But know this, you are knit together as a people of God, and whatever you do, you will have to do it in an exceptional way because you are an exceptional people. Things won't always come up roses, but remember, thorns can be a crown of life too. So use your time well that is given to you. Know that the hope you need is already among you, and let your light shine brightly. Feel your heartbeat quicken and get ready for Christ's invitation to dance hope and health and salvation once more. Dance with a limp if you must, but dance. And may God always be with you. Bless you and keep you. Amen.